in today's show. I'll be breaking down the latest Bitcoin technical analysis as we're back on the rise. What did? Hopefully you took advantage of it, fam. Also, in today's show, I'm going to be sharing Honduras gains new support in an $11 billion tussle with crypto island Prospera. We'll also be discussing breaking news. The SEC is attempting to classify Ether as a security. In the words of Nate Diaz, I'm not surprised, mofos. Also in today's show, Bitcoin bull cycle is far from over. Thanks to the Bitcoin having, according to the latest crypto quant research, I'll be breaking down for you. We'll also be discussing major bullish Bitcoin statement made by the high priest of Bitcoin, Max Kaiser. He says hard floor and no top. We'll also be discussing Bitcoin could explode by over 200% if things go really well. According to this crypto analyst, I'll be sharing his outlook as well as this $190,000 Bitcoin price prediction. We'll also be taking a look at the overall crypto market. All this, plus so much more in today's show. But anyways, if you're new to the channel, family, important to smash that subscribe button to receive daily premium crypto news alerts every day, seven days a week, just like this. Today is pod episode number 1500 and... 86. I'm your host, JV, and it's March 21st, 2024. We had quite the correction the other day. I think we tapped 61, 62. We're all the way back above 66.5 at the time of this recording with Bitcoin up over $3,400 on the day. Let's go. Let's kick it off with our market watch as we do each and every day. As you can see, the entire market back in the green. Bitcoin above 66.5 over here on Coin360 and pumping pretty fast. We have Ether up 6%, trading back above 3,500. Even XRP is getting a warm piece of the sidewalk for once, up 8% on the day. And checking out coinmarketcap.com. Let's get a refresh for the latest data. We're sitting at a 2.52 trillion market cap with 144 billion in volume for the past 24 hours. Bitcoin dominance on the decline. Yesterday was 52%. Today is 51.8. And Ether dominance same as yesterday, 16.7%. And checking out the top 100 crypto gainers for the past 24 hours, we have Ondo up 33%, followed by Jasmine up 26%, followed by Floki up 25%. Below that, Conflux, Caspa, Synthetic, Sue, and Doge. Now, which alts family are you guys most bullish on for this bull run? Holla at your boy. And checking out the crypto bubbles to get a visual perspective on the daily. You can see the majority of the alts, safe to say, 95 to 98% of them in the green and pumping like a mofo zooming out on the monthly can you say alt season when you have meme coins up over 500 percent you already know. And checking out the Crypto Greed and Fear Index, we're back in extreme greed at a 78. Yesterday, we dropped back to greed with a 74, last week an 88, and last month a 72 in greed. We watch out this for this metric. The higher we get here, the more likely of a pullback. And lo and behold, when we hit 90, we pull back 10,000 as a short little correction by the dip opportunity, and we just pull back again down to 62 after hitting, again, 88 last week, so we keep an eye on this. And checking out the Bitcoin halving countdown, according to this clock, we show seven, 37 days left. Yesterday, it was 25. So it's an estimate, just FYI. The current halving date estimate, according to this clock, is April 28th. Can you say Bitcoin halving? And checking out the time chain calendar, you can see where we're currently at as far as the block. We're at 835,673 with a Bitcoin market cap of $1.31 trillion. And $1 is equivalent to 1,503 Satoshi. So stack those stats, family. How many of you recently just took advantage of this dippy dip. Holla at your boy. Let's dive right into today's Bitcoin technical analysis. Check out the charts. Do a little astrology for men as Bitcoin continues ascending to the moon. Yeah, let's get it. Here we go. Bitcoin stayed higher March 21st after a snap rebound gave the bulls 12%. Bitcoin price gains, not too shabby. We corrected roughly 17.5% and we already regained 12%. We're right back in the flesh family. Trading views showed consolidation in the narrow range after a dramatic comeback the day prior. Thank you, Jay Powell. We appreciate it, bro. Bitcoin reached positively to the commentary from the US Fed as it chose to hold interest rates at the current level. After the meeting of the FOMC, the Fed chairman suggested it would be appropriate to enact rate cuts 
later in the year. The committee does not expect it to be appropriate to reduce the target range until it has gained greater confidence that inflation is moving sustainably towards 2%. Now, we all know that's nothing but a bunch of propaganda. We we all know uh, once the genie got out of the bottle, as far as inflation is concerned, there's no putting it back. We're nowhere near 2%. They want to make it seem they got everything under control, but it couldn't be any further from the truth. I know I'm preaching to the choir, but hey, uh, Bitcoin ultimately avoided another retest of 60,000 support, instead marching to 68,000 and fully canceling out the previous losses just like that. What do I preach every freaking day? Expect extreme volatility heading into the having and out of the having, but the trend is going to continue to climb climb towards that six-figure price action. You can see the bullish green engulfing candle overtook the red candle, which came the previous day. You got to love it. Quoting the analyst here, today's objective, hold above 65.3, no problem. Do that and reclaim of the 2021 cycle high is on the menu. Shorters were predictably on the receiving end of pain during the move. Data from CoinGlass put the total short liquidations for Bitcoin for March 20th at 70 million. Shame on you for shorting the king. New outflows from the U.S. spot Bitcoin ETS, meanwhile, failed to dent the sentiment further. The latest figures from the UK-based investment firm Farside estimated roughly a quarter billion left of the new ETF products on March 20th, mostly fueled by $386 million worth of outflows from GBTC, which is part of the reason we dumped so hard, family. The other ETFs saw the inflows, which totaled a mere fraction of daily revenue earlier in the month, as you can see here highlighted in green for March 20th, brought to you by Farside. Now, responding market observers look to remain optimistic. Bitcoin's lack of reaction to the third consecutive day of outflows, popular commentator Dime suggested, showed a newfound resilience to the ETF forces. Quoting the analyst here, today's bounce with the negative inflow means that the market is not dependent on the ETFs to move up. And Samson Mao, CEO of crypto adoption firm Jan3, argued that in the future, even GBTC would see net inflows as standard, quoting him here, all Bitcoin ETF outflows will eventually become inflows plan accordingly. Tell them. And quoting the high priest of Bitcoin, Max Kaiser, in fact, there's nothing to say here because the chart says it all. Check out this. In 2016, the average price in the United States of a home was 288000 That back then was 664 Bitcoin. Fast forward one more halving to 2020, the previous halving, and the average home in America was 328000 USD, only 45 Bitcoin. And fast forward to this year, 2024, the average price of a home is now 434000 which is six Bitcoin. And I want to... Let me know. Do you notice a pattern here that fiat due to inflation will continue to increase for the average price of a home while Bitcoin will continue to decrease? This ultimately means the U.S. dollar is mathematically guaranteed to continue to lose its purchasing power as Bitcoin is mathematically guaranteed, meaning it's a mathematical certainty to increase your purchasing power. Can you say no brainer? Stack those biddies. So very powerful chart. Share that. I shared it on X, retweeted it from Max. You guys can share it as well. But anyways, let's dive into our next story of the day. We broke down the latest technical analysis. Now let's discuss Honduras over in Central America, not too far from uh, El Salvador. Headline reads, Honduras gains new support in $11 billion tussle with crypto island Prospera. That's right. A group of 85 economists have backed the Honduran government's decision to exit the World Bank's arbitration body, adding a new twist to an ongoing battle between Honduras and the disgruntled crypto island building firm Prospera. Prospera, the Bitcoin-loving special economic zone on the Honduran island, wrote Tatan, I don't know how to pronounce that properly, so bear with me, named after the United States company building, has been seeking almost $11 billion in compensation from the Honduran government after legislation change in 2022 killed the island's special status. The fight has been taking place in the International Center for Settlement of Investment Disputes. However, March 19th, two days ago, an open letter, Economist from Progressional International, which describes itself as being on the mission to unite, organize, and mobilize the world's progressive forces, says Honduras' February withdrawal from the international court was critical defense of Honduran democracy. Prospera brought its case before the ICSID late 2022, claiming Honduras owned it billions for breaking a 50-year legal stability guarantee it made after the government repealed laws in April 2022, affecting the legal certainty of the crypto island's special economic zone status 
and its investments. In the open letter, the economist said there was little evidence to show the government's benefit from the arbitration body. Quoting them here, we find scant economic evidence that mechanisms like ICSID stimulate meaningful foreign direct investment. This is what they also shared in the letter. For decades, international arbitration courts like ICSID have allowed corporations to sue states and restrict their freedom to regulate in favor of consumers, workers, and the environment. Since the 2021 election, President Shaumora Castro, Honduras has faced 10 ICSID cases, the largest from the U.S.-based Prospera, with its nearly 11 billion claim, amounting to a third of the country's gross domestic product. Crazy. Specifically, Castro repealed laws and created zones of employment and economic development, which aim to attract overseas investors to bid the boost of the Honduran economy. In June 2021, the United Nations expressed human rights concerns over ZA's legal frameworks and called for an alternative system. It highlighted that around 35% of Honduras, mostly areas with indigenous and Afro-descendant populations who lacked informed consultation on the scheme, was earmarked for ZA use. Now, Prospera carved out a ZA on the Honduran island of Rotatan, about 40 miles off the country's northern coast, and the laws at the time effectively gave it sovereign sovereignty over the island, including the ability to make its own laws, courts, authorities, and taxes. Now, the autonomous charter city made itself attractive to crypto enthusiasts by making Bitcoin legal tender. Holy moly, I cover the news every day and I didn't even realize Bitcoin was legal tender there. What about you guys? Now, creating a Bitcoin education center and opening its international framework to accept blockchain tech and decentralized autonomous organizations. Let's freaking go. Prospera saw pushback from island locals concerned over its growing size and worries about being displaced from their ancestral lands. The UN also claimed that the communities near Prospera lack consultation and information on the project, which Prospera denied. Reuters reported in February that the former head of Honduras, financial watchdog Jose Moncada, said the agreement between the country and Prospera still stands. Now, Monsada said Honduras is obliged to respect the result of any arbitration arbitration presented before the end of August when it's slated to leave the IC SID. So there you have it, my crypto fam. Bitcoin adoption. I didn't even know that. Bitcoin's already a legal tender on this island of Prospera in Honduras. Let's freaking go. Anyways, fam, next story of the day. Let's break it down. Breaking news. The SEC. Will they deem Ethereum an unregistered security? Well, here's the headlines. SEC is attempting to classify Ether as a security. Let's break down the report. Now, JV has been predicting that since the change of proof of work to proof of stake, that there was something shady going on. And I deemed this is probably another red flag. It just shows us they could very easily deem Ethereum an unregistered security. So let's break this baby down. And are you guys familiar with ETHgate? Something to look into? I've covered it a few times in the pod. But anyways, the US SEC has reportedly issued several subpoenas to companies related to attempts to label Ether as a security. According to a March 20th Fortune report, an investigation by the SEC into the Ethereum Foundation could give the commission, the commission, the mafia, regulatory coverage to define Ether as a security. The foundation suggested via GitHub that it may be under investigation from a state authority, which reminds me of this track by Gary Gensler. Too many frauds and scams. Uh, this clown's trying to take us down. What, what a guy. Oh, wow, what, what a guy. guy. Wow, what a guy. <laughs> Several U.S.-based companies reportedly received subpoenas from the SEC requesting they provide documents and financial records related to dealings with the Ethereum Foundation. And according to people familiar with the matter, the commission launched a campaign to classify ETH as a security following the blockchain's transition from proof of work to proof of stake in 2022. In the words of the great Nate Diaz, You just shook up the world. How's that feel? Hey, I'm not surprised, mother (laughs) Precisely, while in office, SEC Chair Gensler refused to answer direct questions about whether ETH qualifies as a security under the commission's purview, despite claiming Bitcoin, Ether, and others were not securities in 2018. No Claire Gare. You can leave it up to him. And let me just say, guess who's back? 
Gary is back. The commission has approved ETFs tied to Ether futures, but has yet to decide whether to approve or deny the spot Ether ETFs. Many experts expect a decision by May. And quoting San, Sam Lemon, uh, Lemon, yes. If Gary looks slim, it's because he's been eating nothing but his own words since 2018. Quoting the chairman, Bitcoin, Ether, Litecoin, Bitcoin Cash. Why did I name those four? They are not securities. I repeat, back in 2018, Gensler claimed none of those cryptos were securities. Flip flop Gensler on the job here, guys. Back, 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 back again. Uh, I'm just, I'm just Gary's back. back, 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 back Tell back, back, a friend. So crypto firm Prometheum, one of the few companies who have approval from the U.S. financial regulators as a special purpose broker dealer for digital asset securities, announced in February it plans to offer institutional custody services for Ether. The decision put pressure on the SEC to provide clarification for firms seeking to avoid potential liabilities related to certain crypto assets. Should the SEC move forward with regulating Ether, it could potentially put the regulator in conflict with the U.S. Commodity Futures Trading Commission. Lawmakers have been attempting to enact legislation to clarify the roles each regulator would take over digital assets, but no bill has been passed at this time. Mr. Gensler, so let me know your thoughts on that family. Do you think the SEC will deem Ethereum an unregistered security or not? And do you think we'll likely get the Ethereum ETF anytime soon this year? Holler. He said, ETH is a security, and no, it is not a security. Yeah, that's why we call him No Claire Gary. He can't answer a simple question, and he's the damn chairman of the SEC. Ether with their infinity sign, shaking my head. That's right, Surge is referring to the max supply of Ethereum. If you look on CoinMarketCap, go check it out. CoinMarketCap.com, click on Ethereum and check it out. Max supply, infinity sign. I'm not surprised, mofos. BlackRock wants it. BlackRock gets it. This is just to FUD the people for the BlackRock to get it at a low price. Could be, Thomas. Could very well be. Let's hear from Gensler. Uh, I've created some guidelines. Where? Cause all of my overlords told me to stop crypto shops. They got bigger. Oh, no. You want help? Well, this is what I'll give you. Tell him, Gary. Soul will dethrone ETH, says Josh. A little middle finger mixed with the lost tooth That must have forgot who I am, what I'm up to yeah. Pick up the phone when you call something I'll not do no. <laughs> Shout out Lil Bubble on the track. Hilarious. But let's dive into our next story of the day. Discuss the latest with the Bitcoin having around the corner. Uh, the latest from Max Kaiser and then this uh, crypto analyst projecting a 190,000 prediction for the King Crypto for this cycle family. This headline reads, should pop up here, uh, Bitcoin bull cycle is far from over thanks to the happening. Here's the latest research from CryptoQuant. Over the past 48 hours, as we know, the price dropped 13%. We climbed right back, you know, 8%, just like it ain't no thing. A report from CryptoQuant shows the Bitcoin bull cycle not over. Not surprised. We're just starting, family. Given the relatively low level of investment flows from new investors and price valuation metrics, still below levels seen in the past market tops, the on-chain data analytics firm Weekly's crypto report reveals that 48% a Bitcoin investment is coming from short-term hodlers. The Bitcoin bull cycle typically ends with 84 to 92% of investment from these new investors, according to CryptoQuant analysts, quoting them here alongside the chart, which shows you the Bitcoin realized cap. The Bitcoin bull cycle is still far from over, as shown by the relatively low level of new investment flows. The chart here also reveals that this metric has reached levels similar to mid-2019 of 52%, when Bitcoin also experienced a meaningful correction, something that the short-term traders should watch out for. The CryptoQuant report also revealed the valuation metrics are still below levels consistent with past market tops. Quitting the report again, CryptoQuant P&L index is still outside of market zone, which you can see the red area, and above the index is one year. Moving average. Now, CryptoQuant's PL index is made up of three on chain indicators that show the profitability of Bitcoin. The index had previously indicated the crypto market will enter a bull cycle in 2024, precisely what we have done. However, the chart above shows that the current level is slightly below these observed when the market peaked during the 2013, 2017, and 2021 bull runs. Now, each 
year specified here is the year preceding the halving for the three previous uh, halvings. And apart from the metrics discussed, the upcoming Bitcoin halving event is a major driver expected to bolster the Bitcoin price, ushering in a parabolic uptrend. Let's go. And as you can see, roughly 30 days until this time, with approximately 4,450 blocks to go, the estimated time remains mid-April, potentially on 420. Happy 420 family, make some noise for that. Historically, the Bitcoin supply halving has been associated with an uptick of the Bitcoin price. The halving has always preceded a significant bull run in the Bitcoin market. Standard Chartered Bank has made a bull prediction, raising its forecast for the Bitcoin price from 100 Gs, baby, to 150,000 this year, 2024. In the investment note to its clients on Monday, March 18th, Standard Chartered Bank wrote the following. For 2024, given the sharper than expected price gains year to date, we now see potential for the price to reach the $150,000 level by year's end. Up from our previous estimate of 100,000, the bank also predicted the Bitcoin price would reach the cycle top of a quarter million dollars per coin next year, 2025, before settling at around 200,000. That's pretty lit. So Standard Chartered, the primary shareholder is none other than BlackRock. They're projecting a quarter million price action this cycle peak and then a correction down to 200,000. Let me know if you agree or disagree with that sentiment from the major European bank. Anyways, next story of the freaking day. Let's discuss the latest from the high priest of Bitcoin. Max Kaiser, shall we? He says, hard floor and notes up, referring to Bitcoin. Love the high priest here. Max Kaiser cited a tweet. A Bitcoin evangelist, Mike Saylor, one of the great Mike's family. Choose any one, Jordan, Jackson, Action, Pack, Guns. I know that's some bars from some rapper, I don't know, but all the great Mike's of our time. We're going to include Mike Saylor in there along with uh, Mike Tyson, Mike Jordan, and uh, Mike Jackson. Yes. Who spread the word about his company, MicroStrategy, taking another step into the Bitcoin realm and bringing a new Bitcoin lump from into its coal wallets. The news of MicroStrategy purchasing another big Bitcoin chunk made ripples, pun intended ripple, uh, within the crypto community, purchasing another 9,245 Bitcoin, which were scooped up for approximately 623 million chump change to Sailor. Using the proceeds from convertible note offering made recently in excess cash, the price at which the Bitcoin was purchased equaled approximately 67000 As of March 18th, the business intelligence behemoth founded by Sailor now holds 214000 plus Bitcoin, evaluated at roughly 75 billion dollars. That means they now control roughly 1% of the Bitcoin circulating supply. And quoting the high priest in response to this, Bitcoin's plunge protection team strikes again. The Bitcoin price has a hard floor and no top. Tell them. And you can see the original tweet from Sailor. MicroStrategy acquired an additional 9,200 Bitcoin for 623 million using proceeds from convertible notes and excess cash for 67,000 per bitty. And as of March 18th, we now hold 214,000 Bitcoin acquired for 7.5 billion, an average price of 35,000 per Bitcoin. This is why we dollar cost average. Sailor has been buying the top for a very long time, but it worked out quite well as his position is now up tremendously, raining billions of dollars. Kaiser also mentioned that strike made by Bitcoin PPT when he retweeted the news about the Japanese government pension investment fund, which is the largest in the world, which we covered on the pod a couple of days ago, which has 1.4 trillion in assets under management, looking into purchasing Bitcoin as part of its investment strategy as the Bitcoin game theory continues to play out around the world. We also have Capriole Investments Fund and crypto analyst Charles Edwards, who published a tweet about Bitcoin corrections that the market is likely to face in the near future. Edwards shared that a normal Bitcoin pullback constitutes 30%. In December, he pointed out, Bitcoin already was in the longest winning streak in history. So if a pullback of 20% takes place, Bitcoin will drop to 59,000 and a pullback of 30% would land Bitcoin back on the 51,000 level. However, we held at 62-ish, right family? So we didn't drop as significant as some anticipated. So these price marks per Edwards, investors and traders should be comfortable expecting all those possibilities. So there you have it, family. Let me know your thoughts on Bitcoin. Do you think it'll continue to go up forever as fiat has no bottom? Therefore, Bitcoin has no top. Holla. Now for our feature story of the day. Let's discuss Bitcoin exploding by over 200% if things go really well. According to crypto analyst Kevin Svensson, let's share his outlook. You should be able to see here on your screen. 
green right now. Let's get it. Crypto analyst Kevin Fenson is saying Bitcoin can skyrocket by triple digits from the current level. He actually shared on X based on historical precedent. Bitcoin could appreciate by roughly 50 and 200%, quoting him here alongside the chart. Based on the ratio of past gains, gives me 95,000 as a minimum target and the medium target of 142,000. And if things go really well, we will hit 190,000 per Bitcoin. But anywhere you know closer to 142,000, maybe. But it could be between 95 and 142. It could be like 124, something along those lines. But these are the areas I am looking at just based on a rough estimate. Let me know if you agree or disagree with these targets as outlined right here in the chart. And according to Svensson, Bitcoin's volatility is likely to ramp up over the coming months if and when Bitcoin hits New highs, which we already know is only a matter of time. The previous high from the last cycle was in 2021 based off retail. We hit 69,000 and a few weeks ago, we broke that all-time high and the new all-time high we hit roughly six days ago. I think it was on, uh, yeah, roughly six days ago. It was the new high is uh, 70, what is it? 73,800, correct me if I'm wrong, fam, but I think that's where we're at. So quoting him again, what we're getting right now is nothing compared to what you might see in the coming months. If Bitcoin continues this, gets the extension up to 90,000. And some would argue we can see 90 or 100,000 pre-having within the next month. Let me know your thoughts on that. And he continues, at that point, we're going to be vertical. And at that point, that's when everyone's convinced that the bull market is back. We're going to go up and up and up. $100,000, whatever. And that's the part, that's the point where most people are vulnerable and sort of just mesmerized by the bullish price action. That's when you have to be the most careful because this is where your huge parabolic trend breakdown takes place and you get a huge washout and a big correction and a consolidation. And then I would think, because we're so early, the halving hasn't even happened yet after that move. Likely consolidate and then run up again at a later point. As you can see here, shows you a potential run of how Bitcoin's likely to go. Expect that extreme volatility, but notice a pattern. We go up, we crack some. We go up higher, crack some. We crack more, then we go back up, crack some, and then we just continue down that parabolic ascent until we smash that six figure mark and to watch the video he did entitled bitcoin mind-blowing volatility coming check the show notes below the video in the description now i've been reminding you each and every day leading up to the have and expect extreme volatility this is nothing new 20 percent dips along the way we didn't just correct 20 percent; it was a little less this time we just corrected what 17 percent, and now we're right back in the mix looking to retest seventy thousand potentially today what are your thoughts family where do you feel the bitcoin price action is likely to go next leading into the halving in roughly 30 days. Do you think we'll break the current all-time high of 73.8? Do you think we'll tap 80? Do you think we'll tap 90? Do you think we'll tap the coveted six-figure milestone so we can get our fiesta on down here in Puerto Rico? Let me know, family. You know, I am extremely bullish. I think post-halving, easy peasy six-figure price action this year. I think next year, more than likely the cycle peak, we can hit a double top. We may hit like six figures this year. I'm projecting multiple six figures next year, but I want to know your thoughts, family. In that live chat, I'm going to read some of the comments. Thomas says 250,000 once Grayscale stops selling and massive supply shock hits around August 2024. That is correct. Crypto Quant and their analysis shared their. Uh, we're likely to see that supply shock in roughly six months, which would take us to around August, as there's currently roughly only 2 million Bitcoin available on the exchanges. You know, BlackRock and the major institutions are hoarding and purchasing up this Bitcoin like it ain't no thing. You also got MicroStrategy and BlackRock now neck and neck as the game theory continues. We have nation state adoption from El Salvador and other countries secretly buying Bitcoin behind the scenes. In fact, I shared a poll on X just last night. I said, which country has been buying Bitcoin secretly? And I, I think the poll said, is it the UAE, which would include Dubai as uh, I think it's the capital or major city in the UAE. I said, is it Qatar? Or I said, is it the kingdom of Saudi Arabia or all of the above? And the majority of them said all of the above. I'm going to check that poll again here in just a little bit. And then someone said, what about China? What about this country? And I said, more than likely, there's a lot of countries, multiple, buying Bitcoin secretly behind the scenes. And if they're not directly buying, they're getting indirect exposure, maybe through Bitcoin miners. 
Just like even freaking Vanguard, who has an anti-Bitcoin stance publicly, but guess what? They're the largest shareholder of MicroStrategy. Vanguard, the same ones fudding Bitcoin. I'm not surprised, mofos, uh, quoting uh, Nate Diaz. Trust nobody, verify everything. Don't listen to what these criminals say. Watch what these criminal mofos do. And speaking of these criminal mofos, this one's dedicated to you. Bitcoin, et cetera. You pointed out the only true use case for it is criminals, drug traffickers, anti-money laundering, tax avoidance. You already know Jamie Demon, yo. They just had to pay another massive fine. That's the largest bank in the United States, you know, JP Morgan Chase, because they continue to get these small slaps on the wrist. Big deal. Another quarter, what is it, quarter billion dollar fine? They're making 38 billion a year in profit. So it virtually means continue with your criminal activities, pay off this small little slap on the wrist, and continue doing what you criminals do at the top of these banking institutions, right? But anyways, family, JV, you're shaking your camera. It's making me dizzy. It's probably because I'm touching the desk and obviously the the webcam is on the computer. My apologies for shaking like that. We shouldn't be shaking like that. Shaking like bacon. You already know. Jonathan Mann. Shout out Jonathan Mann on the track. This is a banger. This is the new Jammy Jam. Criminals, drug traffickers, anti-money laundering, tax avoidance. (laughs) 